that. Why do I do that? Why do I take a stone and rough the edges of a biface or really any piece of stone in that napping process? Now the process is known as abrasion or raking. And essentially what it does, it allows you to take a razor sharp edge and essentially reinforce it by taking a stone and rubbing the edge, what I'm doing is I'm greatly reducing or even eliminating the opportunity of this stone to crush under some sort of force. And that's through some sort of hard hammer or even soft hammer percussion. When I abrade the edge, it actually strengthens the platform or the area that I'm looking to hit on that stone edge. I get a lot of questions asking why I do that. Many people comment that it seems counterproductive and they don't understand if I'm trying to make a sharp stone, why would I rough the edges through the process of abrading. And I've taken the time to answer some of those comments and I kind of routinely say that the key thing with abrasion is that if you're abrading stone and you're trying to go from you know a large spall of stone into some sort of small thin biface, it's one of those kind of procedural steps. It's something I'm always doing. There is no set time, there is no set place, but you kind of feel an instinct in to do it when you're looking to remove stone from a spall or when you're just in that thinning process or even when you're pressure flaking trying to work on that final form. But when I rub the stone on the edge, it's simply just making it stronger. It's making it stronger so when I hit it with some sort of hard hammer percussion or soft hammer percussion, I'm not gonna get a complete catastrophic failure. The edge isn't going to crush and create little steps and fractures and all this little chaos along an edge that's gonna really hinder your thinning process when you're flint napping. And that goes for pressure flaking as well as thinning. So when I abrade my edge, I'm looking to take an edge that's sharp and really reinforce it just by dulling it, raking it, abrading it. You can use any one of those terms. And when I look at this piece of stone here, I can kind of see that this little spot right here is representing my platform. So I'm reinforcing its edge. And when I strike it, it allows me to pop a flake off. You can see right where I struck the edge by that little, little kind of natural platform that was sticking out, ultimately removing that flake. Just to take this edge, and I'm gonna go right here, right next to it. Now, I'm not gonna braid it. It's very deep down inside. I really wanna braid it because I know I need to, but I'm not gonna braid that edge, and I'm gonna hit it again with some percussion, and you'll see the different sort of uh, flake that I get. That flake completely crushed. And you can see it was right along this side, but that whole edge is just kind of collapsed and crushed underneath that impact. If I strike this one right here, but abrade it, I'm looking to strengthen the edge and slightly above it. Because it's gonna fall under a lot of force when I strike and hopefully it removes a nice flake down. And I'll even hit it with a hammer stone. And just by abrading, even with that hammer stone, I can still pull off a flake. It doesn't really matter if you're using hard hammer or soft hammer, because even when I pull that flake off right there, even with that hammer stone, just because I just caught that edge that I abraded, I'll stick it back on here, you can see Right there, I just caught the edge, it was reinforced, it was strong, it wasn't sharp, it was nice and dull, and when my hammer stone made impact with it, it ripped that flake off all the way through, creating a nice little removal. So I really have four ways that I typically abrade. The first one is safety abrasions. I'm gonna pop a flake off. You can see that right on this flake, I have a real sharp corner here, sharp piece here and a razor sharp edge here. So I want to abrade this just because I'm going to be handling it. I'm going to get a kind of a deeper look. I'm just abrading down and I'm just making it a little bit safer to handle. Anytime I'm holding any, you know, stone in my hand, I got to remember the backside of that stone's going into my hand. If I'm striking it, I can drive that flake right into my hand. I just give a little safety abrasion. I remove any of those sharp, jagged points. And it gives me the opportunity to kind of look at that stone, you know, give it an inspection, say, all right, I'm gonna attack it from this angle, or I'm gonna attack it from this angle. It's just a little preparatory work before I really start thinning it out. 
Next type of abrasions are what I call macro abrasions. This is where I'm abrading almost an entire edge. And I'm gonna take you know, that hammer stone or that abrading tool, just rough out and abrade this whole edge because I'm gonna work this whole edge. I'm still in that thick process. I'm looking to do a lot of thinning and I just might be hitting it one after another the whole way around. And I don't want to hit a braid, hit a braid. You can, it's up to you. But on that macro abrasion, I'm really just doing full sides, trying to really get as much abrasion in there as I can so I can just continuously hit this stone the whole way through. Another type of abrasion is what I call pinpoint abrasions. This is where I'm looking to abrade one specific little spot on a stone that's relatively thin. The stone is thinning out and I'm looking to apply some pressure flaking to it. Maybe I'm looking to give it a final shape or a final form. And I'm just taking my abrader, finding that one pinpoint spot, and I'm giving it a little abrasion. It's a little bit more methodical. It's got a little bit more intent. Maybe I've got a little high spot on the stone and with the pressure flaker, boom, I can pop it off. But it's just pinpoint. Uh, that spot right there, I need to address that. I'm not raking or abrading the entire edge of my stone, just one little spot. Last type of abrasion is something that I call scrunching. This is essentially where you're kind of using one tool and you're in that thinning process. And I'm just taking my hammer stone and I'm just looking to pop a little bit of the flake off, but I'm just, I'm rubbing down. I'm getting some material to pop off. It's giving me a little bit better edge. This doesn't work the best with soft hammer, any sort of hard hammer. But yeah, I'm just looking to give this guy a little bit of work on that edge and then go through and pop one of those flakes off. This is a good example again of doing some of that safety abrasion. Super sharp point, the whole way around. Just gives me a little bit safer piece of stone flake to work with. You always have to remember, you never wanna braid up. I don't wear a lot of safety glasses or even gloves or anything like that. And the one reason why is I never really worry about the stone coming up in my face as long as I'm not throwing stone up in my face. When I abrade, I scrape down, I remove my stone. I'm always kind of coming at an angle, moving the stone a little bit. But what I'm doing is I'm ensuring that no stone is going into my eyes by always abrading down. I can abrade down and I can also abrade the edge front to back. When I abrade down, sometimes I have a tendency to remove a little bit of material. You'll find that when you're abrading, when you're popping these guys down, you're gonna wind up raising your edge by removing some of the material. When I abrade front to back, or I just abrade the edge, in this case, I'm not really removing as much material and I'm really just abrading all those high points. When I strike a platform that is abraded, that force is more evenly distributed amongst that entire platform or that edge. And when I hit something that's razor sharp, it almost absorbs all of that impact, but shatters and crushes underneath that immense amount of force. So abraders can be any number of stones, really. Abraders are a little bit more modern, like this uh, old uh, bench grinding wheel, pieces of sandstone, like these guys. And you can just see over time and usage, you start to create you know, grooves and indentations in them. Anything is gonna give you that opportunity to really rough up an edge. Even some of your hammer stones get worked as abraders, uh, especially my flat stones like this guy here. Any hard stone that has abrasive-like qualities to it can work as an abrader. It just needs to be hard, abrasive quality, something that feels like a sandpaper or a kind of a bench grinding wheel, and uh, you really can't go wrong. But all of these phases in flint napping, whether it's the large spall, the thinning, or something that's kind of going for that final form, you can apply abrading to these all throughout your flint napping process. I will say when it comes to larger spalls, you don't need as much. The reason being is when you are hitting a large, thick piece of stone like this, you're not actually hitting the edge. You're not looking to strike this. This is too much mass and force coming into this stone. I'm actually hitting above the edge. I really don't need to take my abrader and abrade up, up on top of this little uh, face and this little platform right here because I'm looking to strike up here and I know it's already reinforced. This stone is in its solid state. There's no cracks, there's no issues with it. So when I strike, you can see just when I hit it, 
you can see my point of impact real clearly, which was right here. So I'm not hitting the edge, I'm hitting above the edge. There's no real need to abrade this area because I'm hitting the stone. I'm striking the stone, I'm striking above my edge, therefore abrading up here is really pointless. So when it comes to the abrasion, remember, you can do safety abrasions, you can do macro, you can do pinpoint, and then you can do those scrunchings, kind of with the, whatever tool that you might be using. When you abrade a piece of stone, you are helping reinforce the edge by making it stronger, and you are ultimately preventing an edge collapse. You're preventing that razor sharp edge from really collapsing underneath the force of that strike, creating a whole bunch of problems for you. There is no rule saying you have to strike and abrade, strike and abrade. You'll figure out your pattern that's gonna work best for you. Don't forget to do it. Remember, don't abrade up in your face. You'll avoid getting things in your eyes. All right, that is abrasion. Appreciate you watching.